Okay. okay, so hello everyone. My name's Shala. I'm from Healthwatch Berry. Um, and today we're doing our Facebook Live with the lovely Steph from the Butterfly Princess Initiative. So I'm just going to go through a couple of introduction slides first and then Steph can take it away. So, okay, so live stream guidelines. We want to be accepting. Everyone is welcome regardless of race, ethnicity, national origin, religious affiliation, sexual orientation, sex, gender identity or ability. We want to respect each other's boundaries. We don't want to make advances or comments on appearance that might make someone uncomfortable. And we don't want to be rude by intentionally provoking, threatening or insulting anybody. Um, we want to try and keep the chat onto the focus of the stream so we don't want to keep the conversation going but we don't want to repeatedly send the same comments so try not to flood the chat if possible and don't self-promote we're not here for a sales pitch we need to stay focused on the stream today and we'd like to keep it clean so no shocking obscene vulgar or inflammatory language we need to leave that out so today's session overview we're doing the introduction now with myself Steph's going to talk about the butterfly princess initiative and what it is the work that she's doing in the local area and then we've got some lovely questions to ask her so who are we health what is your health and social care champion we make sure nhs leaders and other decision makers hear your voice and use your feedback to improve care we listen to your experiences of using health and social care services and share them with those with the power to make change happen. We can also provide you with information and advice. So different ways that we can support you, we can signpost you to local or online support groups. We can provide information and advice about you or your family members healthcare. We can listen to your experiences of using healthcare and services in the Berry area. So, yes, and in case anybody needs it, here are our contact details, should you want to get in touch with us. Okay, I'm going to start sharing my screen, and I'm going to pass it over to Steph. Hi, Steph. Hi. Hi, lovely. Hi. So, hi, everyone, and, and uh, thank you for letting me use the platform. For this today. I know I'm usually the co-host of some of these sessions, so it's really nice to be given the opportunity to come and have a chat with the things that I do. So I set up the Butterfly Princess, uh, like Butterfly Princess, I've, I've renamed it a few times, but the Butterfly Princess brand sort of like in 2018. And initially, it was to help businesses with their advertising. So if I was wanting, um, you know, if they had any events coming up or any, like, promotions, I would do a vlog with, with, them, with them to help get the word out there within the local community. So if anyone wants to come along, they could do but then COVID hit, and we all know the impact that COVID's had on local businesses and other sectors of the community. So like many other businesses, I had to re-evaluate re my business. Well, it's not like a business because I, I, I do everything as a hobby. I don't get paid for it. And I don't want to get paid for it because I love what I do. And for me, it's for me to get my advice out there. And um, I'll be sharing with you very shortly a very powerful story that's um, very personal to me uh, as to why um, the book, it's called The Butterfly Princess. Um, so I had to really think about uh, things, you know, what because obviously we couldn't go out much because everywhere was on lockdown local businesses were on lockdown and so forth so i i thought of uh the butterfly princess initiative and then it sort of um went on to the show bit because i like to cover um all different areas to do with disability because obviously i've got a physical disability myself, I've got cerebral palsy, I'm a wheelchair user, uh, but I just don't just like to focus on disability because I want to show people who will listen to my vlogs or, you know, come on to my chat show 
my arguments is that I'm more than just somebody with a, a physical disability. It's really important that I point out that I've just got a physical disability um, for cerebral palsy, but that's all that's wrong, wrong with me sort of thing. But I haven't got, I have, I have never been diagnosed with um, any sort of learning disability, so I haven't got autism. I haven't got um, any sort of learning disability of any kind. But I just feel that like when you, you're disabled, people just label you with that um, one label. I mean, I mean are, I know there's like plenty of groups for people who have learning disabilities. And I understand why, but for, uh, I just feel that there isn't enough education or support groups for people like myself with physical disabilities. And uh, so that's one of the reasons why I set up what, what, what I have done. I mean, I've got my own Facebook page, I'm on uh, Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn. And, and so that's one of the reasons why, because I've never had any help and support from the services. I've sort of done it all myself. And like, you know, I've had to really, really prove myself. And this is one of the reasons why I do what I do, but I do what I do. But uh, there is, I will now go on to, um, so like one of the main reasons why I did, why I set up what I did. When I was very young, I was subject to yeah, the majority of my childhood. I was mistreated by a caregiver, and this um this resulted in me being locked in a bathroom for several hours on my own. And during that time, I, I created an imaginary friend because I know that that imaginary friend wasn't with me in a physical sense, but she was with me in an emotional sense. I called this imaginary friend, um, friend Emma, and she was with me during that time in the bathroom. And um, this caregiver didn't just put me on, um, put me in a bathroom for hours on end. We would also um, call me names and, and do a lot of physical harm to me, like hitting, name calling, saying that I wouldn't achieve anything in life, I wouldn't amount to anything in life. And I was, I was subject to horrific bullying, for many, many years by other children that, that were part of this caregiver's family. And I was um, made to um, sit in my own feces because this caregiver wouldn't change me into clean uh, clothing and underwear. So from an early on in the morning to like, uh, late um, six o'clock in the evening, one time I was made to sit in my own feces. And this was quite horrific because the other children, the, her, other, her other children, grandchildren would say, I wish I didn't have a, have a nose to smell your poo. And that made me really self-conscious because of my disability. I couldn't physically change myself. And I was I remember one time when one of their grandchildren said to me, Oh, um, one of my classmates believe that think that me and you are sisters. I would never want a sister like you who crawls around on the floor and can't walk and use splints because and if you if, if you ever met if you ever make somebody believe that um that we're sisters sisters I will I will practically rearrange your face for you and basically again, again so I I was subject to that mistreatment and bullying for a period of 11 years from me being a very small child from me being three months old to um, 11 years old, so 
at the start of to, from at the end of primary school. Um, I was grateful that you know from that from being the ages of eleven, I got out of that caregiver's care because God only knows how how I would have coped that going on throughout my educational career because I used to get a bus home from school to, from home to school every morning that was provided by the local authority and that that bus would drop me off at this caregiver's house um at the end of the school day and I would be crying and the people on the bus would be very concerned about me. I also had to spend all school holidays at this caregiver's house and it and it was like going into the lion's den because I always used to think Will I be put in the bathroom today? Will I be made to go on long walks and subject to horrific bullying? And um, and it was and it was really horrific. And it, it has it has been left with me that for many years. And um, it didn't quite be um because I've had um issues with mental health self-harming um you know and that sort of thing and, and it sort of really really came to a head of like the year the back end of 2016 where i was um had a mental breakdown um i was suffering from post-traumatic stress and i was um i wasn't sectioned but i was um I submitted myself to the care of a psychiatric ward. And, uh, you know, and that was a real eye opener for me because, um, you know, I got to meet uh, various different people on that ward, you know, who were suffering from mental health issues, from the use of alcohol dependency, drug dependency. And I thought that. Even though I'm, I've never had like uh, alcohol or drug dependency, it really opened my eyes to how other people suffer, and that was one of the main reasons why, as well, why I wanted to set up my uh, butterfly princess show. And um, so I, I went through that, and I went through counselling and CBT. And from that, it sort of gave me the courage um, from last year to take it to the police, you know, to tell somebody in authority because then I would know that I, I, um, I've done everything I can. So I took it to the police. Unfortunately, in their eyes, nothing could be done because in their eyes, you know, they didn't see it as mistreatment or child child cruelty. They just saw it as like it would be bullying. And if it did go to court, which it didn't because it didn't get that far, that um members of the jury would just see would just see see it as you know, an adult chastising a child, even though I explained to people you know that I had to wear splints and this caregiver would make me pick bits of food up off the floor and my splints would be um, digging in me digging in me and my feet would be very painful and going on long walks would be very painful because this caregiver would push my walking frame to an extent where I would be nearly falling off it in order to to make me walk faster and make my legs move faster. And um, when I reported this to the police, they would just say, oh, the jury members and the other prosecution mem members would think, oh, well, um, this is just a very strict person, you know, she's making this child doing exercise and she's just um, chastising a child. And, um, and that's why I don't have much faith in the criminal justice system. So I thought, like, you know, 
you know, I, I know I can't physically. When you abuse, when you've been mistreated in life, it, or horrifically bullied or abused, it will never leave you. But but there are times where you learn to live with it and you have coping mechanisms to help you move on, move on with your life. And for me, setting up the butterfly princess show and the initiative is for me to like um to like show that little girl in the bathroom how far she sort of become and for, for me to be given a voice and for them to show that, you know, I'm not just a person with a disability who should be locked away in a bathroom and uh, in a back room and um and sort of like mistreated or like she should just go to disability groups because that is all she's good at. I want to prove to people that I'm more than just somebody with that disability. And I'm really and I'm really grateful because you know, Health Watch very sort of like gave me that platform, like giving me that platform to like, you know, assist with the Health Watch very live sessions. And I've, I've, I'm doing various different work. I'm help, going to be helping out of loving the hills for care homing stubbings in Mam's Bottom, helping the, the, some of the residents with the activities we do. And I'm really, I'm really, I'm really grateful that, you know, I've now been given the opportunity to um, have my own like podcast regular. Um, live chat show which will be on Roach Valley Radio every Monday um, 11 till 1 and I'm always looking for various guests because we don't just talk about disabilities um, I want to give platforms to um, people of the LGBT community the Jewish community the Asian community anyone who has community groups anyone who's had mental health issues. I want to open that platform so I so I can I can give them opportunities to people that I never had and so that nobody like myself will ever be mistreated. To no one and that girl can never be locked away in that bathroom ever again and that her voice cannot be heard. So thank you for listening today. I'm really sorry, you know, if it's that made for you with you emotional. I just think that it's very important to share my story. But if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Wow, Steph, that's thank you so much for sharing that with us. That does sound like you've had quite the experience. I mean, I feel like you've answered most of my questions. So you know, I wanted to ask you what made you want to start, but that's been very obvious. So what I took from that is that you've been through a certain amount of experiences and you just want to make sure that yeah. you don't do that again. And that takes a massive amount of strength. So you should be really, really proud of yourself there, my love, I really do. I mean, um, what I know that obviously you help co-host with our lives and stuff like that. Something we're really, really grateful for, your contribution to our lives. You know, you are a very big face of it. So... Can you tell us a bit more about the other work that you're doing then? So you mentioned that you're going to a care home, for example, and you're helping yeah, out there. So, so I'm, I'm going to be starting very soon at Lavinger Hills Care Home. That's a millennium care home um, in Stubbings, in, in, in um, Ramsbottom. And there I'm going, because I've already known some of the residents, uh, because I, I did some activities with them, but... Um, I'm going to be doing some regular activities with them, with some of the residents, you know, maybe with some of the people, you know, who have got dementia and or whatever, or we can't get out of the rooms because of the mobility problems. So just really helping others is something that's really important to me. I think that's just absolutely lovely, Steph. Honestly, it's really... I just love that you've taken something like this and you've managed to turn it into something beautiful and inspiring. Yeah. I think that's something to be so proud of. Yeah. Um, can I ask then, considering what you've been at in the past and you've said stuff like you're not very confident with the authorities and, and the legal practices, 
do you think that they've changed much now? What would your advice be if you knew that somebody was dealing with that sort of situation themselves that you had to live through? Well, I would say, well, obviously, because um, mine happened sort of like from me, me being very young till um, three months old, from me being 11. And um, I only, I only dealt. I only reported it to the police like last year, and you know it took a lot of courage for me for me to do that. And I know the CPS have like guidelines to go through, but I just don't think that you know. But we thought more in my view, they thought more about the perpetrator, you know, because they'd be quite old now. And, you know, my feelings and what I'd gone through, you know, being in a psychiatric work ward wasn't really taken into account. So I think that people really need to take it more into account what the person, the victim has been through rather than the perpetrator, uh, because people need to realise that for someone who's been abused or mistreated or horrifically bullied, uh, then we need to like start taking into account how much courage it's taken them to come forward. Well, absolutely, and this is a big thing about historic crime, isn't it? So, you know, well done on finding that bravery and that strength. Yeah. So, absolutely well done because it's worth a shot either way, isn't it? I don't know, the yeah. outcome is definitely not what we'd have wanted for, but you've definitely done what you could have done so you don't hold any regrets there now you know you can find your peace with it well as much as you can um so you've said that you're looking for people to get involved so if people were going to get involved with either the butterfly princess or your podcast or your activities or any of the work that you do how would you advise they go about that so obviously um obviously if people want to be a guest on my radio show it's just gone Roach Valley Radio, so a uh, very local um, internet radio show um, station. Um, but and they're going hopefully going to be DAV um, at the end of the year. So they're based in between Berry and Rochdale. So if anyone's local to the Great Manchester area please come into the studio because I would love to, you know, chat with you about what you do and even if you've just got an interesting story to tell. So you can get in touch with them uh, by your phone um, on 0161 764 or if you go on the uh, website www.rochevalleyradio.com at the bottom of the page, of the menu page, there is a thing that says contact. Just click on that and, you know, we can um, fill out the contact form. But if you're not based in Greater Manchester, because I have a various um, interest, such as history, literature, I'd love to interview, you know, the Bronte Parsonage because I love reading novels by the Bronte sisters and classic literature like that. So for anyone uh, who isn't based in Greater Manchester, who wants to come on my show, that is possible also because we can also do an interview down the phone or via Zoom, our team, so there's endless possibilities for anyone who wants to be part of that show. And for anyone who wants to take a look at previous um, hot activities I've done, I do have a Facebook page that's called The Butterfly Princess Show, and then I'm on Instagram, it's The Butterfly Princess Show. I'm also on LinkedIn, it's Steph Marie. So the, there are various ways that people can connect with me if they choose to do so. That's lovely, because one thing I did like when I was looking down your Butterfly Princess page was just the variety of things. So yeah. people are sharing experiences, you're discussing books yeah. and history. It's just, it's very inclusive, isn't it? And yeah. has a lot of different angles inclusive for all and we also talk about you know to be subjects with relations disability sex and relationships cancers so i want to interview a range of people not just professionals or you know like 
but I think it's also important to uh, have that lived experience. So anyone who has lived experiences of health conditions, disabilities, cancers, LGBTQ, plus health and social care. I want to hear from them as well as professionals and historians, you know. So anyone who, who is anyone in the world can sort of come on my show. Oh, that's amazing. Very inclusive. Yeah. Well, that answers all my questions, Steph, because honestly, you gave us so much information. All my yeah. questions seem a little bit mute at this point. <laughs> but I just wanted to thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us and your experiences and all the fantastic work that you're doing in several different ways now. I hope these opportunities yeah. keep coming up for you. It's amazing. Thank it's amazing. you. And I look forward to co-hosting more Facebook Live sessions when they come about. Absolutely, my love. We'll look forward to it too. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Bye.